was a rising star once. A rising spelling star. Damn you anti-disestablishmentarianism. No one could spell that right. No one! Except that one kid. Before congressional Democrats decided to hold public hearings on whether to impeach Donald Trump, no one outside of upstate New York had ever heard of Elise Stefanik. Now, Stefanik is the hottest commodity in Republican politics. Whammo! Here's Trump on Stefanik during a recent Fox and Friends interview. But I'll tell you what, this young woman from upstate New York, she has become a star. Her mannerism, her way of talking, her... She's direct. Whole, right to the point. No, it's, it's just the whole thing. It just worked. She's, she's a, a tremendous person. She was fantastic during the hearings. Ah, yes, that amorphous, intangible quality of stardom. You just know it when you see it, am I right? So who is Stefanik exactly? And how did she get the star treatment from Trump all of a sudden? All right, so at first glance, she's not an obvious candidate to be the next big thing in Trump Republican politics. Stefanik actually spent several years as a staffer in the George W. Bush White House before she ran for Congress in 2014. The upstate New York seat that she won that year, it stretches from Saratoga Springs basically all the way to Canada, was previously held by a Democrat and Barack Obama carried the district in both his 2008 and 2012 races. At the time, Stefanik drew some national attention because she was the youngest woman ever elected to Congress as of 2014. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has since surpassed her. But since that 2014 victory, Stefanik hasn't been heard from all that much. Until mid-November, that is, when the House Intelligence Committee started its hearing into Trump's conduct toward Ukraine and whether he had committed, in the process, high crimes and misdemeanors. So what's amazing about the Stefanik story and her meteoric rise is that she became a viral star in Trump's world not by what she said, but actually by what she wasn't allowed to say. Okay, here's how it went out. I know, Ms. Stefanik, you had a, a few quick questions for the ambassador. I'll yield to you, Ms. Stefanik. Thank you, Mr. Nunez. Ambassador Yovanovitch, thank you for being here today. Suspend. The gentlewoman will suspend. What is the interruption for this time? It is our time. The gentlewoman will suspend. You're not recognized. Mr. Nunez, you are minority counsel. I just recognized. Under the House Resolution 660, you are not allowed to yield time except to minority counsel. The ranking member You're yielded time gentleman? to another member of Congress. No, that is not accurate. You're gagging the that young lady from New York. That is accurate. Ambassador Yovanovitch, I want to thank you for being here today. gentlewoman will suspend. You're not recognized. This is the fifth time you have interrupted members of Congress, woman, duly elected members of Congress. A woman will suspend. Now, under the established rules, Schiff was right. Both he and Nunez had 45 minutes to question the witnesses in the impeachment hearings. All other members on the committee had just five minutes. But the only person that either Nunez or Schiff could allow to use that 45 minutes, other than obviously themselves, was the committee lawyer sitting next to them on the dais. Love that word, dais. Now, giving any part of that 45 minutes to another member of Congress was forbidden under the rules of the hearing. Hmm. No matter. The image of the much-hated Schiff gaveling down a young female member of Congress and refusing to allow her to speak was catnip for the Trump wing of the GOP. And when Stefanik did get to talk during the five days of public impeachment hearing, she was an effective Republican messenger, hammering at the various witnesses, asking them to provide evidence of corruption, bribery, or extortion. One clip of her doing just that has already been viewed more than 665,000 times. In this tertiary readout of the call, Ambassador, from the U.S. participants, was there any reference to withholding aid? No, there was not. Any reference to bribery? No, there was not. Any reference to quid pro quo? No, there was not. Any reference to extortion? No, there was not. And I presume you also got feedback from your Ukrainian counterparts as to how the call went. Did they mention the withholding of aid? No, they did not. Did they mention any quid pro quo? No, they did not. And did they mention any bribery? No, they did not. Stefanik also defended Trump at every turn, including his much criticized decision to attack Ivanovich even while she was testifying before Congress. Now, Stefanik had told CNN earlier that she disagreed with that Trump tweet but told reporters after the Ivanovich hearing, quote, these hearings are not about tweets. They are about impeachment of the president of the United States. This is a constitutional matter. You can disagree or dislike the tweet, but we are here to talk about impeachment and nothing in that room today and nothing in that room this week, nothing rises to the level of impeachable offenses, end quote. Stefanik's performance during the hearings not only caught the eye of loyal Trumpists, it also made her the new enemy number one for the never Trump crowd. George Conway, 
the husband of senior White House counselor Kellyanne Conway, and also one of the most outspoken and harsh critics of Trump and Trump's Republican allies, called Stefanik, quote, lying trash, end quote, and asked people to donate to her 2020 Democratic opponent. Stefanik, of course, replied in kind, saying that Conway was in need of serious help and labeling him a sick misogynist. And then Nikki Haley, the former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, got in involved, tweeting, quote, George Conway is the last person that can call someone trash. Hashtag pathetic. Oh boy, nothing gets the blood going like a good Twitter fight. Here's some political real talk. Whether you like it or not, the upshot of all of this for Stefanik is nothing but good. She clearly has her eye on leadership roles within the House Republicans, and it's become abundantly clear since Trump's election that the only path to success within the GOP is to be an ardent ally of this president. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy of California rushed to praise Stefanik in the wake of the hearings, tweeting, quote, Rep Stefanik is a young, powerful conservative woman, and Democrats are threatened by that, end quote. You can be sure that McCarthy will be looking for ways to bring Stefanik more into the leadership fold to please Trump, yes, but to also help the party raise money from its small dollar donor base. Stefanik tweeted that she had raised $500,000 in under two hours during the impeachment hearings. McCarthy will also want to break up the largely male-dominated leadership ranks within the House and Senate GOP. So how did Stefanik make all this happen? She learned a critical lesson of the Trump era. It doesn't matter if you're right. She wasn't, at least according to the rules of the hearing. It matters that you make a splash. And that is the point. We make New Point episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and now a special impeachment episode on the weekends. Check them all out.